So let's consider z equals ax squared plus by squared plus cxy. Okay, the x derivative, well, I don't have to read it to you. you let the y be constant. You're going to get 2ax from this. You're going to get uh, cy from this, taking the x derivative. And the y derivative is going to be 2by plus cx, and I just did read it to you. The xy derivative, well, if we take the y derivative of the x derivative, the y derivative of 2ax is going to be 0. The y derivative of cy is just c. And if we took the, y deriv the x derivative of the y derivative, took the x derivative of this, we would again get c. So the fxy is c, fxx is 2a, fyy is 2b. Okay, well, calculating fxx, we take a derivative with respect to x of this, clearly we get 2a. Derivative with respect to y of this, clearly we get 2b. Okay, how does this test come out then? Well, the test, uh, if we just plug the xx derivative in here, the yy derivative in here, and the xy derivative here, okay, this d quantity is then going to be 2a times 2b minus c squared, which is going to simplify to 4ab minus c squared. That looks kind of like the discriminant of a quadratic equation, except the letters are a little bit different. Uh, for quadratic equations, b squared minus 4ac. So we kind of scramble the letters to change the sign of it. Uh, so that's why I call it something like a discriminant. Okay, well, the test says that if d is greater than 0, you're going to have a minimum. Yeah, it, minimum or maximum, depending on the signs of a and b. If d is less than 0, you have a saddle point. If d equals 0, you don't know. So what is it that makes d greater than 0 for this function? What would, how would the values of a, b, and c determine whether d is greater than 0? Well, whether 4ab minus c squared is greater than 0 for this function. Okay, And that's going to occur... 4ab minus c squared greater than 0, easily solved, we get c less than 2 times the square root of ab. Now, in order to solve that inequality and get a value of c, a and b, well, this ab has to be positive or, or 0. ab can't be negative, which means that a and b... Um, can't have opposite signs. So A and B have to have the same sign. So if A and B have the same sign, it's possible to get a relative maximum or relative minimum, provided C isn't too big. Because if C is too big, it'll be bigger than 2 square root of AB. So as long as C isn't too big and A and B have the same sign, your second partial with respect to x is going to have the same sign as your second partial with respect to y. And the xy partial is not going to be big enough to mess it up. So you're either going to have a max or min depending on whether the a and b are negative or positive. Okay. Now you get d less than 0 if c is bigger than 2 square root of ab. Okay, and um, I say that would occur if a, b, a and b have different signs, it, and I didn't include another case, it would all, oh, okay, if, oh, ne never mind, I did say it, I didn't see my word or there, I thought I'd written something wrong, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, so if a and b have different signs, then d is automatically less than zero because a, b is going to be negative, and when you subtract c squared, it's going to be even more negative. So if d is less than zero, uh, D is less than zero if A and B have different signs or if C is too big. If it's bigger than 2 square root of AB, then this negative will overcome the positive of your 4AB, even if AB have the same sign. D equals zero occurs. Well, A and B would have to have uh, the same sign because obviously if they have different signs, you're going to get a negative. And also, c squared has to equal 4ab, so c has to equal 2 times the square root of ab. Okay. So, 
if you have a function of this nature, you don't have to memorize this as a formula. We're just using this discriminant to analyze the behavior of the function. If C is too big, you have a saddle point. If A and B have different signs, you have a saddle point. If A and B have the same sign and C isn't too big, then you have either a max or a min.